active galaxies require a massive compact energy source of enormous strength to stabilize the orbits of stars contained within them. The engine which drives the direction of rotation and shape of each galaxy consists of what astrophysicists refer to as a supermassive black hole located in the direct center. The central black hole located within our galaxy contains an estimated mass of over one trillion stars and is believed to be over two trillion miles in diameter. Many leading astro and quantum physicists also believe that supermassive black holes spin at an unbelievably high rate due to their overwhelming mass. At this high rate of spin, the black hole's projected gravitational field is no longer spherical, but rather flattens out to form a massive yet extremely thin spinning disk. Our galactic plane can easily be identified by even the untrained eye. As one views the shape and characteristics of our own galaxy from images provided by the Hubble telescope and projected computer simulations, we can easily see that all matter moves and is formed around this flattened gravitational influence. This also explains why all galaxies are flat and circular. If you look at our own galaxy, there exists a dark band which shows you where this gravitational plane is located, where galactic dust and mass has been collecting since the birth of the galaxy. This is where we can easily see the location of the galactic plane, which is what modern science refers to as the galactic equinox. But what does this have to do with humanity's future? In the Milky Way, which is an active galaxy, our solar system cyclically moves above and below this galactic plane. As stars and planetary systems, including our own, approach this galactic plane, the gravitational influence increases, which disturbs the stability of each planet, including Earth. The passage through the densest portion of the gravitational plane is the direct cause of the devastating cycles and pole shifts that we see recorded throughout Earth's history. This cyclic nature of our solar system as we move through the Milky Way is precisely how many ancient civilizations based their calendar systems. The Mayans themselves describe what they refer to as the dark rift or the galactic plane in ways eerily similar to those of modern scientists and physicists. The Mayans state that the end of each age which brings about worldwide devastation is defined by the world sitting on the dark rift even though the Mayans don't clearly present the science behind why the galactic plane causes severe implications upon Earth's stability in modern terminology, it is very clear that we are talking about the same event, an event where the Earth passes through the galactic equinox, the dark rift, or the central plane. It all refers to the cyclic and destructive gravitational influence created by the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. Researchers and scientists agree that we are indeed approaching the end of what the Mayans define as the current age. Even though many science groups are still debating the full implications of what passing through the galactic plane will have upon Earth, we have already begun to see the early stages that the increased gravitational influence is having upon our world and other planets in the solar system. As we approach the gravitational plane, we will continue to experience severe weather and ecological effects such as earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes and volcanic activity with increased frequency and intensity. As we penetrate the densest portion of the galactic plane and experience the full gravitational effects, we may witness unprecedented solar flares, unexpected meteor showers and one or more geographical pole shifts. Subsequently, unexpected celestial objects may pass through the solar system as they too are influenced by the gravitational plane. This may account for the ancient records describing several past worldwide catastrophes accompanied by passing bodies, comets, or what some researchers today refer to as Planet X. Utilizing the latest in research data, we can speculate that due to the overwhelming rate of spin and the generated gravitational field, the galactic plane or gravitational disk could relatively be paper thin, requiring Earth with our current speed of movement through the galaxy only a few years to completely pass through this plane, experiencing the full effect upon Earth's stability.
if this data is correct, could this be what the Bible refers to as the seven years of tribulation in which the earth undergoes a series of devastating global catastrophes which result in the death of billions? Well, one thing is for sure. The ancients endured several worldwide catastrophes that all but erased their civilizations from the face of the earth. Their clues, structural remains, and records have attempted to warn us and prepare us for the reoccurrence of this cyclic event. Warnings that so far humanity has ignored. Though modern researchers have a general time frame, we are still unable to pinpoint the exact year in which we will begin passing through the galactic plane. So even though the telltale signs are already evident throughout our world, how can it be known for sure when you should be bracing for tomorrow? ...have the potential to cut off power and seriously disrupt the many sources of technology that we've become to depend on. For more on the potential danger and what can be done to prepare, I spoke a brief time ago with Michio Kaku. He's the author of Physics of the Impossible. Professor Kaku, thanks for coming on the program again. Should we be scared of the sun? Yes, uh, every 11 years the sun throws a temper tantrum and unleashes a solar tsunami throughout outer space. In a worst case scenario, I repeat, worst case scenario, property damage could be over a trillion dollars, power could be wiped out through most of the continents of the world, billions of dollars in property damage throughout many cities, and there could be food riots, uh, collapse of what we call Western civilization may take place. Hang on, hang on, Professor. Are you really trying to scare us here? I mean, is this seriously a possibility? That's right. NASA and um, the scientists in this country are taking this very seriously. You see, we are very young in the space age, and every 11 years, the sun flips the North Pole and the South Pole, releasing a burst of solar energy. So far, we've dodged the bullet, but we're very young in the space age. In 1859, all hell broke loose when we had telegraph wires. Telegraph wires were pretty much wiped out because of this gigantic solar storm 150 years ago. If something like that were to happen again, when we have hundreds of satellites, tremendous power grids around the world, it could cause untold havoc. And again, that's a worst case scenario. We expect that in the year 2012, 2012, there could be more solar activity because that coincides with the next sunspot cycle. Yeah. Chances are nothing will happen, but we have to be prepared for a solar tsunami. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll start tonight, quite frankly. Is there anything we can do about this other than drinking ourselves into a stupor? NASA scientists have laid out many things we can do. First of all, we should start to have backup systems, and our power grid should be reinforced to handle outages from outer space. In 1989, power in Canada was partially disrupted because of a solar storm that took place. Our satellites have to be reinforced, and we have to make sure that our communications network especially remain intact in case of a worst-case scenario. Now, the lesson of Katrina, for example, was that the inevitable inevitably happens. And we were unprepared for Katrina, though we knew it could happen. Now, NASA is aware of the fact. Uh, reports are now being issued by many scientists saying that it's good to be prudent in case at some point in the future a worst-case scenario happens, like in 1859. We are well into the space age now, and now is the time to reinforce our satellites and power grid. Okay, well, we'll have to end it there, but solar tsunamis is definitely something else for President Obama's intray. Thank you very much. The again. end of life as we know it. NASA did a study, and its findings are now out. We're not talking about global warming. A brand new government study on the very real destruct uh, destructive threat of solar storms. Check it out. The surface of the sun, a roiling mass of plasma and charged uh, high energy particles. As we move to the launch pad, we can show exactly what we mean. Escaping the surface of the sun and traveling through space to areas down here on Earth. Now this giant fireball, mm. if that ball hit the Earth and its magnetic shield, it would be devastating. I want to show you New York City at night. Times Square drove through here at 8 o'clock last night. Streets are empty. But the electric power grid would be wiped out by the current. 
Lights and computers, transportation, hospitals, all would go down. The study warns it would be a disaster, far worse than anything we have seen before. The menace of these sunstorms poses a bigger threat to more high-tech and advanced countries like the U.S. Everything from our sewage systems to our Wall Street banks operate with our power grid. And a game-changing solar storm that could hit at any time. So how worried should we be? Sounds like we should be. Michio Kaku is an astrophysicist and author of The Physics of the Impossible. Sir, good morning to you. Welcome back here. Glad to be on your show. Uh, now, what I'm reading here scares me to death. Should I be that way? That's right. We're talking about a potential Katrina from outer space. Uh, Katrina caused about $100 billion in property damage. And unless we begin to make efforts now to reinforce our satellites and power grid, we could have something maybe 10 times bigger than Katrina because we're talking about the loss of all electricity and all satellite activity. We'd be thrown a hundred years back into the past. Michio, has this happened before? In 1859, we had a humongous storm that wiped out telegraph poles, and we tried to then estimate what kind of power could do that. And we now realize that we are very young in the space age. If something like the 1859 storm hit again, it would literally paralyze all the United States, not just for a day or an hour, but for months to years. Uh, transformers would short circuit and burn out. Satellites would be fried to a crisp. And the sun, however, has these storms every 11 years. Every 11 years, the magnetic field flips. But in 2012, we do expect perhaps, perhaps another big one. Well, we have never before in our history in human history for that matter, relied so much on technology as we do today. And that's part of what they found in the study because we rely so much on our ability to communicate through our computers that they would all go down, which would handicap not just New York, but really the eastern half of the United States. That's what the study finds, which would be far worse than the blackout of New York from four years ago, Michio. That's right. Those blackouts only last for a few hours to a day. But if you start to short circuit all the transformers and blow out the satellites and fry the communications grid, then you're talking about knocking out uh, the United States uh, for months before we can get enough rescue crews and repairmen to handle not just one city, but hundreds of cities around the United States. You know, Michio, sometimes you come on here and you sound like the doctor of doom and gloom. Does, this, well, th I, does something like this keep you up at night? Um, it does, and I think with Katrina, you know, engineers knew that Katrina could happen, but they did nothing because they said that it's not going to happen while I'm around. Well, now we learned the lesson. You have to prepare for things, especially when you know that at some point it's inevitable that we're going to have another big one, like we had back in 1859, except this time we're totally dependent on electricity.